as many as 40% of the world's bird species are seeing population declines amid threats such as climate change and habitat loss due to human activity. In California, another year of crippling drought has raised concerns about the plight of the state's annual winged visitors who travel along a route known as the Pacific Flyway that stretches from the Arctic to the tip of South America. Birds are able to do things that the rest of us can only dream about. With no map, with no food or shelter, these small voyagers fly from one end of the earth to another. They can navigate this globe with just their wings and their body. I just find that fascinating. California's Sacramento Valley is an important stop for millions of birds on a migration path known as the Pacific Flyway. I envision them as these, these highways in the sky. So for birds that breed in western Alaska, they'll come down our coast or through the valley. Many of them seek shelter at this wildlife refuge. But they need water. And with the western U.S. in the third year of a severe drought, there's not enough of it to go around. This is a permanent wetland that we, that we managed for this, this summer. That's kind of a limited habitat in the Sacramento Valley. We artificially kept it, kept it flooded all summer long. And then to the west here, these are our seasonal wetlands, uh, which did not get any irrigation this summer, and a good portion of which aren't gonna be flooded this fall or winter. Historically, this area was covered in vast wetlands but 95% of those are now gone, converted for agriculture, protection from floods, and other human uses. But the birds adapted to a new wetland habitat in the valley's flooded rice fields, where the majority of U.S. short and medium grain rice comes from. In the evening, they get up and fly off to rice farms and private wetlands to forage and they all kind of leave at the same time and you get this just unbelievable sight of a half a million birds picking up and flying over you. In a normal year, this rice field would be full of water and migratory birds using the ecosystem for food and habitat. But because of the drought, almost no rice has been planted in this area this year, meaning for the birds, there's basically nothing for them here. I order the water, they fill the canal up, and then I open the screw gate, and it opens up uh, the big door at the bottom here, and then the water starts to flow. Don Bransford, a third generation rice farmer, is experiencing the effects of the drought firsthand. He's only been given 14% of his usual water allocation, not enough to safely keep the fields flooded. As a result, there's nothing planted on his more than 700 hectares of rice fields. It's a problem for him and for the ducks and geese who would usually be starting to arrive for the winter. Actually, this is the first time ever that all of this land's been fallowed. Many birds will still come to the valley this year, but some may change their route, flying in longer stretches to avoid other places on the flyway even more ravaged by the drought. And with less than half of the rice fields flooded, they'll be fighting for space and resources, which can lead to disease and other stressors. So we have a battery, which is charged by the solar panel. And then in here is the brains of the system. As concerns grow for the health of the birds. Data from the antennas down the wires into here. Technology is helping scientists understand the scale of the problem. There's a lot of data that's collected at birds' summer nesting spots and their winter roosting spots, but we don't necessarily know that the paths that they take to get there. Tagged birds can be tracked along the Pacific Flyway using towers like this one that link into a network of coordinated receiving stations. You can learn about how long they spend and where they spend their time during their migration. So that is becoming more of a, a conservation hot topic as we want to conserve both the nesting and the roosting places in the summer and winter, but also those very important critical stopovers. If they don't have a safe place to, to rest and eat on their migratory path, they're not gonna do so well. 
There was, there was one in this field. Conservation groups also work with the rice farmers using grant money to encourage them to flood their fields to provide habitat for the birds. Around us, all you can see are fallow fields, and this field is fallow as well, it's not growing rice. And many growers in the Sacramento Valley this year, in any year, you know, they don't necessarily have all the water they need to grow a crop on every acre. And so we incentivize farmers to flood for a short period of time in, this, in what we're called the shoulder season. But this year, with reservoirs at dangerously low levels, many farms barely have any water. And as climate change makes the world hotter, things aren't likely to get easier. It's just hotter, the water's evaporating faster, and so we're losing those natural wetlands at an alarming rate. That's where these managed landscapes become that much more important. It's not just an issue in the U.S. West, Birds are facing habitat loss around the world. The Asian flyway in particular is a place where vast wetlands have been lost in recent decades, and it's created a real problem for shorebirds that are migrating from Alaska all the way to Australia, sometimes in you know, only a couple hops. And so programs like this, bird returns and other such programs, we think could actually find solutions in some of these working landscapes. There's things like shrimp farms or salt uh, production facilities that actually can create great habitat if they're managed appropriately. For all of human history, we've shared the planet with birds. They've been a source of fascination and inspired our own attempts at flight. But this century will bring unprecedented challenges. The management of shared resources, like water, could determine whether scenes like this become much harder to find. Xuân Thủy National Park is one of the most diverse wetlands ecosystems in Vietnam. Its mangrove forest covers an area of nearly 15,000 hectares in Nam Dinh province, and it's home to about 1,300 plant and animal species. But this is what makes Xuân Thủy special, migratory birds. It's the biggest ground for migratory and water bird species in northern Vietnam, hosting more than 200 species, including nine endangered ones. The migratory season for shorebirds has started. And these are among this year's early arrivals. No rush to feed right now. But as thousands of birds begin to arrive, the competition for food will intensify. Lê Tiến Dũng has been a ranger at Xuân Thủy for more than 20 years. Từ tháng 8 đến tháng 11 âm lịch, khi mà gió heo may nổi lên thì các cái đàn chim di cư từ phương Bắc bay trở về vườn quốc gia Xuân Thủy rất là nhiều. Đây là một cái trạm dừng chân trung gian, nó như là một cái sân ga biến bãi để cho các cái loài chim dừng ở đây để nạp năng lượng. Vietnam sits on one of the world's greatest flyways for migratory birds, the East Asian Australasian Flyway extending from Arctic Russia and North America to the southern limits of Australia and New Zealand. It sees the migration of millions of birds every year. Many species on the flyway stop in wetlands along Vietnam's long coastline. The black-faced spoonbill is Xuân Thủy's symbol and one of the most prominent of the migratory birds that stop here. Listed as an endangered species, it reportedly has a population of about 4,000 around the world. In recent years, between 50 and 70 birds arrived at Xuân Thủy during migrating season. Many of these birds face increasing peril. It's estimated that just 200 breeding pairs of the spoonbill sand piper remain in the world. Only four were spotted at Xuân Thủy National Park last year. 
just one example of a worrying trend. Khoảng 20 năm mình công tác ở đây ấy, thì mình thấy là cái số liệu lượng chung nhìn chung ở trong toàn cái khu vực và trên toàn quốc ấy, là có cái hiện tượng suy giảm suy giảm rõ rệt. Mr. Dũng says all the birds that stop at Xuân Thủy National Park are protected. But even here, the number of migratory birds over the years has plummeted. The situation is worse in other unprotected white lands. Lê Mạnh Hùng has traveled to many parts of Vietnam in the last two decades to study white birds. And he is renowned among Vietnam's bird researchers. Hơn 20 năm mình nghiên cứu là thuần thể suy giảm một cách rất nhanh chóng, đặc biệt là các loài mà vịt. Thì trước đây có thể ghi nhận ở vườn quốc gia Xuân Thủy có đến 3 40 ngàn cá thể, nhưng hiện nay chỉ còn khoảng vài trăm cá thể. Experts say the key factors behind such declines are man-made. Thì cái mà tôi theo mình nghĩ cái quan trọng nhất, cái nhân tố quan trọng nhất hiện nay là cái mất sinh cảnh sống. Rồi từ cái mất sinh cảnh sống phát triển những cái loại hình kia thì nó bắt đầu đến tác động của con người. Từ tác động ô nhiễm cái nguồn nước, tác động ô nhiễm nguồn thức ăn. Along Vietnam's coastline, large swaths of the wetlands that shorebirds rely on for food have been converted for aquaculture production and economic and tourism projects. Something replicated in other countries along the flyway. And there are other more direct threats. As Mr. Zung awaits the arrival of the birds this migratory season, local hunters are also waiting outside the park. Bird hunting is not just a hobby, but also a livelihood. Aside from catching birds, they sell tools such as nets and equipment that plays bird sounds to lure the birds into traps. A night hunting can yield up to 40 birds. Many birds survive their long journey, only to be caught in these traps. There's no estimate of how many such birds end up on dining tables in Vietnam. But dishes made with them are prized as local delicacies, and demand is high. Mr. Hong has helped rescue many endangered birds from traps but they are often recaptured the very next day. Cái cái công cụ nó quá là phát triển. Công cụ đánh bắt quá phát triển. Từ lưới mờ cho đến keo dán cho đến súng của Trung Quốc đu các loại nó quá dễ dàng để để để, để mua. Cho nên là, là là nó càng tăng cái khả năng mà họ bắt được. Ngày xưa là họ chỉ có dụ đơn giản thôi, thì một hai cá thể nhưng bây giờ họ tận diệt. Đấy là cái cái vô cùng là là nguy hiểm hiện nay. Mr. Hong says many hunters are unaware of regulations banning the hunting of wildlife or migratory birds. For this man, hunting is a way of life. He's even set up his own YouTube channel to share his experiences. <laughs> To reverse the decline, the Vietnamese government has ordered its agencies to take urgent and drastic measures to protect white and migratory birds. It's also organized training for police and forest rangers to identify endangered birds. But some fear it could take years before such measures begin to make any real difference. Experts and rangers like Mr. Zung say the protection of migratory birds requires concerted effort from countries all along the flyway. 
and until they come up with a lasting and coordinated solution, thousands of birds will continue to end up in traps and on dinner plates across Vietnam. <coughs> parts of the world, vultures are feared and seen as heralds of death and decay. But in Nepal, these scavengers have been the subject of intensive efforts at conservation due to the dwindling population because of human activity. I have traveled to Pokhara, west of Kathmandu, to find out more about these efforts and to learn about the emerging threats to their survival. In areas of the Himalayan region, the value of vultures is deeply rooted in local cultures. For example, sky burials are still practiced where vultures are allowed to feed on the remains of dead people. In Hindu mythology, a vulture is the carrier of the planet Saturn. Yet, vultures are still viewed with fear and disgust in Nepali society. Nepali society ma gidda bhanne prajati chai aba namban parai rahayeko jasto avastha ho tara arko pata ma herne ho bhane chai jun hamile aba hindu culture ma base bhako hunale ramayan ko story sundha keri chai jasto jatayu le chai sita lai chai protect gareko bhanne hisab le garda keri chai telai alikati ani jasto giddai bhanera chai hamile awareness garna try garda keri chai ekdamai garo jasto khalko hune bhayo ani tele garda hamile chai elai switch garna lai chai aba arkai way le जाऊ न तो हमें मोर जटायु रेस्टुरेंट गिद्ध रेस्टुरेंट न भाई जटायु भर्ड बड़ी हमी यूज गये कि वहाँ अंडरस्टैंडिंग करा जटायु रेस्टुरेंट इज अ स्पेशल काइंड अफ रेस्टुरेंट इट्स नट फर पीपल बट फर वल्चर्स दी सो कॉल्ड वल्चर रेस्टुरेंट्स आर डटेड अक्रॉस नेपाल दे गेट एनिमल्स दैट डाई स्किन देम एंड फीड देम टू द वल्चर्स जीवन गुरुंग has been working here for the past year following in his father's footsteps jatai restaurant bhaneko aba lob huna lagayo giddha lai bachauna lai ni restaurant rakheko ho giddha le khani restaurant ani feri khauni ni kasto cha bhane maile marera khaudina jab gai goru marcha ani balla taba khauchu not too long ago vultures were at risk of extinction across south asia Here in Nepal, the populations of some vulture species declined by more than 90% throughout the 90s and early 2000s. Research showed that exposure to diclofenac, an anti-inflammatory drug for cattle, was causing kidney failure and killing vultures unintentionally. At restaurants like Jatayu, the vultures are fed carcasses free of these drugs. Such operations recognize the huge role these raptors play in maintaining ecological balance विश्व मा जटाय र माउरी एउटा मानि मैले संसारमा भएको पशु पंछीहरु मरेका बनाउने सडेकाहरुलाई सफा गर्दै हिँड्ने चाहिँ पिचिकार गिद्ध रहेछ Their diet of carrion allows them to safely dispose of dead animals without harming other creatures Without these scavengers wildlife livestock and humans would be at risk of major diseases ko yo bhalchar bhanne euta species ho jun chai biodiversity euta ang parcha ani kunai pani euta species ko chai aphnai mahatva huncha yo usma arth ma kina bibhinna kriyakrap haru chai ulekh gareko bata chai aru ma chai sahyog bhai raheko huncha aba yo ele garne jun esko aphno duty thyo इन्भाइरोमेन्ट क्लिन गर्ने अब त्यो चाहिँ हट्दै गइसकेपछि सोसाइटीमा पनि जस्तो अब रेबिजहरु चाहिँ बढी फैलिने त्यस्तो त्यस्तो अवस्थाहरु देखिन थाले एफर्ट्स बाइ एक्टिभिस्ट्स ह्याभ लेड टु द एस्टाब्लिशमेन्ट अफ सेभेन कम्युनिटी लेड वल्चर रेस्टुरेन्ट्स एन्ड मल्टिपल वल्चर कन्जर्वेसन एरियास अराउन्ड नेपाल एन्ड अ मल्टिलेटरल अप्रोच टु ब्यान मेडिसिन्स सच एज डिक्लोफेनाक इन साउथ एजिया has helped to increase their population in less than 15 years but while vulture conservationists are working on threats such as carcass poisoning and the destruction of their nests newer man-made threats are on the horizon 
They include the impact of a brand new international airport that's just been completed in Pokhara. Yeah, when you fly, take off from land, you certain meet certain feet. Go bees, man. Say, board movement, big sugar, little chara, aru go movement. Atho bache chara aru dheri jamaatma movement boy, man. College and rich man, jaa man. Baniye go sa. Atho thake airport go scenery man, tei cha condition. Atho arku gula say, tei paani ni three types species say critical in nature, jo regular movement garden, wohi pari nesting colony bani cha. Bali durghatna boy, man. Atho ani tei pani mori boy, out go aham thama cha. अब मैनुअल कैजुअल्टी पनी ह्यूमन कैजुअल्टी पनी होनी बात है तो आप उठाओ मत सर और एयरपोर्ट को स्टोरी पनी क्लोज होनी बात है। नेपाल्स रैपिड हाइड्रोपावर डेवलपमेंट पोजेस अनदर डेंजर, द रिस्क ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोक्यूशन। दिस रूरल एरिया ऑफ तनहो अबाउट 50 किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम पोखरा वाज वंस अ सेफ हेवन फॉर द बर्ड्� Together with the local government, the community here built a farm where they would bring old cows and buffaloes. When they died, they were then fed to the vultures. But high-power tension lines for hydropower generation have now become a problem. Conservationists like Hemanta have spent their whole lives working on saving vultures. As new threats evolve, they must also find new ways to mitigate them. Local people are in the forest group, and they are focused on the forest group. But there are some of the oil scenarios that they are not able to do that. कंजर्वेशन कॉन्सेप्ट है हमें लेकिन एक्सपोर्ट और लाइफ नहीं कराना पड़ रही है इंजीनियर और लाइफ जल्दी कंस्ट्रक्शन में इन्वॉल्व होने जाने कंट्रैक्टर और जो जो कंट्रैक्ट लेने जाने जैसे बच्चे का एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव पर्सनल्स और नेपाल गवर्नमेंट के एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव पर्सनल और लाइफ नहीं � the government has worked with conservationists in the past to halt the decline of vulture populations. But with economic and technological development giving rise to new threats, much more work lies ahead to ensure that vultures continue to play their vital role in Nepal's fragile ecosystem. <laughs>